A driving instructor with the gift of speaking to ghosts meets a single father whose daughter is under a powerful spell. Although hesitant to use her powers after an unfortunate accident when she was younger, the woman confronts her fears of repeating past mistakes to stop a desperate man from summoning the Dark Lord. In his video cassette series, paranormal expert Vincent Dooley explains that ghosts are present in people's everyday lives. They can possess even the most menial things, such as pens, pen lids, garbage bins, and even the bacteria in cheese. By the side of the road, Rose and her pregnant sister Sailor lay flowers on their father Vincent's memorial headstone. Rose apologizes to her father for causing his demise, which Sailor annoyedly corrects by saying it was an accident. Above them, a magpie perches on a wire. Immediately after they drive off in Rose's driving school car, a garbage truck pulls up and the worker tosses the bouquet into the hopper. Later that day, while teaching a student, Rose makes small talk and asks what plans the man has for the evening. The man thinks she's hitting on him and says he's engaged, so Rose quickly assures him she wasn't asking him out. When she gets home, Rose sees the magpie again and honks her horn to scare it away. Inside the house, she greets her father and late cat's pictures on a table blocking a padlocked door. While preparing her dinner, Rose listens to her voicemail for possible driving school clients. Instead, her voicemail is mostly people calling her, asking for paranormal help. One woman wants her to check her haunted garbage bin, while another wants her to use her ability to speak with ghosts to find her phone charger and tell her if she's pregnant. Exasperated, Rose listens to the last message from a man asking about her driving school service. Earlier that day, Martin sees an ominous message on the bathroom mirror from his late wife Bonnie, reminding him to pay the car tax. In the bedroom, Martin sees the shirt Bonnie laid out on the bed for him to wear. When he says he doesn't want to wear the shirt again, the closet door suddenly opens, hitting the man's head. Finally, Martin concedes and agrees to wear the shirt. At breakfast, Sarah, Martin's daughter, sees the bruise on his face and knows it was her mom's doing. Before Sarah leaves for school, she begs her father to seek help from Rose Dooley, the psychic driving instructor. Martin scoffs and says the Dooley family is an odd bunch, especially their father, whom he used to see on TV when he was younger, claiming he talked to ghosts. Sarah reminds him that he, too, speaks to ghosts before leaving Rose's calling card in the mailbox. After Sarah rides to school, Martin takes the card and calls Rose. Hours later, Rose picks Martin up at his house, and he gets into her car. When she shakes his hand, she feels an electric current that causes the car radio to go haywire. She tries to play it off and asks Martin to remove his oversized sunglasses before they start the lesson, but he insists on keeping them on. During the lesson, Rose is pleasantly surprised at how well Martin is doing. Eventually, the man comes clean and admits to contacting her for help with his late wife. Rose realizes Martin wishes for her to use her talent, which she clarifies is something she no longer does. He explains that his late wife speaks to him, which surprises Rose. Concerned, she asks if his wife gave him the bruise under the glasses, but he doesn't speak further. Martin only spoke to Rose to appease his daughter, and he'd like her to call Sarah and tell her that she can't help them. He admits he feels terrible for misleading the driving instructor because he finds her presence warm and approachable. Disappointed, Rose asks Martin to exit the vehicle, which the man apologetically does. Later, Rose sees a toaster on the sidewalk trying to get her attention, and the tree branch waving at her. Seemingly ordinary people walking down the street turn into floating specters under white sheets, which Rose recognizes as lonely spirits who need help moving on to the afterlife. Meanwhile, one hit wonder musician, Christian Winter, lives in a castle in the countryside with his overbearing wife, Claudia. Christian wishes to revitalize his career after multiple album failures over the past 20 years. He receives a call from his manager, whom he updates on the ritual he's currently performing. Christian enters a room where a sleeping girl is suspended in mid-air above a pentagram. He tells his manager that after the sacrifice is made, he'll send him the new album immediately. When Christian walks out of the room, Claudia enters, and he hears her try to wake the woman up. After hearing an explosion, Christian sees Claudia splattered with blood, unfazed. Panicked, he asks her what she did, and she says she only wanted to wake the woman up to ask her something, but then she just fell apart. The woman's body is in pieces in the middle of the pentagram. Annoyed, Christian has to search for another pure woman to sacrifice in time for the blood moon tomorrow evening. He grabs a special stick that points to purity to search for the person to be offered. Later, Christian performs an incantation on a soccer field and drops the rod, following the direction to where it points. The next day, Rose gets her hair done at Sailor Salon, and she tells her sister about Martin. Rose says she felt something when they touched hands but isn't quite sure what it meant. Sailor encourages her to help the man with his ghost problem, but Rose worries an accident like the one that happened to her father might occur, leaving Martin's daughter orphaned. So, Sailor suggests to Rose stalk Martin for the time being, which the driving instructor says she'd never do. Later, Rose follows Martin into a store where Sarah works as a cashier. She hides behind a mop and overhears the father telling the daughter about his conversation with Rose, whom she calls nice. 
Sarah is disappointed Rose doesn't want to help Martin, but is glad he's willing to prove to her that he's finally considering ridding their home of Bonnie. Outside the store, Christian's special stick points him toward the store, where he sees Sarah by the window. As he's about to enter, Rose recognizes him and fawns over him. After Rose leaves, the musician looks menacingly at Sarah Scrunchie. That evening, Christian performs the incantation in the castle using the hair from Sarah Scrunchie and a drop of his own blood. In Martin's home, the lights start to flicker, and he hears Sarah scream from upstairs. In her bedroom, Sarah levitates from the floor. While watching TV, Rose answers Martin's call and gets a worried look as she listens to him explain that he needs her help. She tells him not to do anything and to wait for her to get there. Rose heads to the padlock door leading to her late father's study, where she imagines Vincent on his desk and her younger self sitting by the corner. She quickly grabs her father's bag and optimistically foresees how she and Martin will fall in love after she saves his daughter's life. In Sarah's room, Rose is horrified when she sees the woman floating on top of the bed and tries to flee, but Martin pleads that she's the only person he can turn to. He asks if it's Bonnie possessing Sarah, but Rose thinks it's something even more sinister. She plays her father's tape on Gloating, where they see footage of a goat floating in midair about to be sacrificed to the Dark Lord. Rose believes Sarah is the sacrifice who'll float to where the original spell was cast on the eve of the Blood Moon. Panicked, Martin wants to rouse his daughter awake, but Rose stops her and shows him the exploding goat on the TV when a farmer prods it with a stick. Rose says she can perform a holding spell to keep Sarah from floating away until they can break the spell. She takes herbs from her father's bag and makes a crown before placing it on the sleeping woman's head. Christian and Claudia wait outside the house for Sarah to float away to the castle. In the kitchen, Rose says they'll need ectoplasm, a paranormal sludge from seven different ghosts and apply it to Sarah's face to break the spell. Moments later, Rose recalls when Martin mentions how he could communicate with ghosts and says it's a rare talent he shares with her father. Rose can talk to ghosts, which is why she and her father worked so well as a team. When Bonnie suddenly tosses a plate across the room, Rose suggests Bonnie as the first ghost they could collect ectoplasm from. But when Martin finds out the ghost has to enter his body first and then exercised for good, he isn't ready to let go of his late wife just yet. So, Rose takes out her phone and plays the voicemail messages of the people seeking her ghost-busting services. Outside, Christian and Claudia see Sarah's body taken into the back of Rose's car. Christian theorizes a holding spell may be protecting the sacrifice, and they plan to follow the vehicle. Later, Rose and Martin meet with Janet, who worries her garbage bin's haunted. While initially terrified by the phantom bin, Rose takes Martin's hand and performs a ritual to transfer Janet's late husband, Tom, inside Martin. With Tom inside Martin's body, Rose performs an exorcism which causes Martin to spit whitish ectoplasm into a jar. Meanwhile, Christian sees the driving school sign on top of Rose's car and comes up with a plan. The following day, Rose watches her father's tape and remembers the guilt she feels for inadvertently causing his demise. Her guilt compels her to ignore Martin's calls as she fears what happened to Vincent might end up happening to the man she likes. Later, she listens to a voicemail from Christian wanting to employ her services as a driving instructor, asking her to pick him up at the castle. Before she arrives at the castle, the magpie perches on the tree. Christian's ineptitude and fear of driving cut the session short. He tries to get her to speak about her ability to speak to ghosts, which Rose is coy about. He encourages her to pursue her talent and offers to help her by pulling off her scrunchie and singing to her. Weirded out by the exchange, Rose opens Christian's car door before driving off, and the magpie follows her. Christian holds the scrunchie in his hand, successfully obtaining a few strands of the woman's hair. That evening, in Martin's kitchen, Rose finally admits what happened to her father. Years ago, she and Vincent helped a woman whose dog drowned in a haunted pothole. They successfully transferred the dog's spirit into Vincent, but the ghost in the pothole also entered her father. When she was about to exorcise the two spirits, she forgot the words to the chant. Vincent, controlled by two different entities, became confused and started spinning in the middle of the road when a truck suddenly hit him. Rose then explains that her messing up the words led to Vincent's untimely passing, which is why she'd no longer like to take on Sarah's case. Upset, Martin says she has to do it to save his daughter's life, even if it'll cost him because at least that means he tried. Later, Rose walks into Sarah's room where Martin is singing her a song. They apologize to each other and agree to finish the job. Before leaving the house to find more ectoplasm, they wait for Sailor to arrive and potential babysit Sarah, who mustn't be disturbed, while they go on a date. All across town, Rose and Martin exercise spirits to collect the seven jars of ectoplasm, but they find themselves one short. Rose takes Martin to the cemetery, where they visit Bonnie's grave. She calmly explains to him that he knows deep inside that it's time for him to let Bonnie go. Martin then tells her how Bonnie died when the handmade clock he made for her dropped on her head. They then admit to each other how this experience has made them feel alive and open to new things before sharing a hug. Later, they drive back to the house, where Sailor is cuddled up with her date, Brian. 
With the lunar eclipse drawing close, Rose hurriedly explains the situation to Sailor, who wants to stay and witness Bonnie's exorcism. In the dining area, Rose summons Bonnie into Martin's body. When the foul-mouthed ghost is uncooperative, Rose explains that their wedding vow stated, till death do us part, and it's time for her and Martin to part. Meanwhile, Christian performs a ritual to break the holding spell on Sarah and weaken Rose's powers by using her hair. In the exorcism, Rose momentarily loses her powers just as Martin spits up the ectoplasm. Upstairs, the holding spell breaks, and the crown of herbs disappears from Sarah's head. Moments later, Sarah's body floats through the hallway, summoned to Christian's castle. In the dining area, Rose instructs a confused Brian to take all the ectoplasm and apply it to Sarah's face. Rose tries to shake Martin awake, worried she might have done irreparable damage to the man. Martin wakes up, but Rose is surprised to find Bonnie still possessing the man half the time. She slaps Martin to bring him back to the surface, just as Brian returns to tell them that Sarah is gone. Panicked, Martin yells and asks Rose what she did wrong, but Sailor tells him to watch his mouth when speaking to her sister. Amidst the chaos, Rose hears the magpie squawking and sees it by the open door. She yells at the others to pipe down and says they must follow the magpie. While driving, they catch up to Sarah's slowly floating body and see Christian and Claudia also in pursuit. Rose realizes Christian was behind the spell all along. Impatient, Claudia grabs Sarah's ankle and steps on the gas to hasten the sleeping woman's arrival at the castle. In haste, she hits the magpie with the windshield and severs Martin's finger as he tries to reach through the car window to grab Christian. Rose takes the injured bird and tells everyone to get back in the car. In the castle, Christian begins the final ritual with Sarah floating above the pentagram, but Claudia keeps interrupting with her rude remarks. Having had enough of her, Christian takes a blade to his wife's throat before returning to the incantation. Meanwhile, the group arrives, and Sailor starts to feel labor pains. She tells Brian but wants him to keep it from Rose as more important things are at hand. They find Christian in the room, but they're too late to stop the last drop of blood from falling onto the pentagram. Suddenly, a pit opens on the floor and suctions Sarah to its depths. Martin cries in anguish as he looks down into the hole. In anger, he attacks the joyous Christian, who believes he succeeded. Seconds later, Sarah is thrown back out of the hole and lands on the floor unharmed. Devastated, Christian wonders what he did wrong, sure he had sacrificed a pure woman. From the pit rises the Dark Lord Astaroth, who confronts Christian for deceiving him. Astaroth reveals Sarah is no longer pure, and the woman gives them a sheepish look. When the Dark Lord demands another sacrifice, Christian says he hasn't prepared any more, but Astaroth can smell a pure one among them, then points at Rose. Astaroth draws Rose towards the pit against her will, and Martin tries to hold onto her. Meanwhile, Sailor feels the baby is coming, so Brian and Sarah do what they can to help deliver it. In the chaos, the magpie flies across the room, trying to distract the Dark Lord, but Christian pierces it with a dagger. The magpie pecks the musician's eye, and he drops the bird. As Rose is slowly dragged toward the pit, she suggests Martin deflower her so she'll no longer be viable as a sacrifice, which Martin obliges. When Christian realizes their scheme, he attempts to stab Martin with the dagger, but Sarah pushes the musician into the pit using the special stick. As Christian falls into the depths of the underworld, Astaroth follows, and the hole closes up. After the ordeal, Bonnie, still inhabiting Martin's body, tells Rose to look after her husband and daughter. Rose hears the baby's cries and sees Sailor has just given birth to a healthy baby boy. Martin picks up the injured magpie, and Rose says they must do one last exorcism. She transfers the spirit into his body, and the sisters are surprised to discover the bird's been their father all along. Rose apologizes to her father for causing his death, but Vincent tells her none of it was her fault and that he's proud of all the people she's helped. Before he leaves, Sailor tells him she's named her son Vincent after him. Three months later, Rose and Martin have set up their paranormal investigation service and are a happy couple. Martin then opens a box with a wooden ring inside that he's whittled and asks Rose to marry him. Bemused, Rose cheekily turns him down to Martin's surprise. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.